the Votes for Women campaign. In the mid-1800s, life in Britain for women was very different to today. Back then, they had few rights, very little education was available to them, and they couldn't work as doctors, lawyers, politicians, or in other professions. And if they got married, everything belonged to their husband, including any money they earned and property they owned. Women were also not allowed to vote in any national elections, meaning that they had no say in the important decisions and laws affecting their everyday lives. The suffrage movement and the Votes for Women campaign began in the mid-1800s. The campaigners were known as suffragists. People came together from all walks of life to try and make a change together. Women weren't the only ones campaigning for Votes for Women. Men also campaigned. In 1866, Elizabeth Garrett Anderson and her fellow campaigner, Emily Davies, delivered a petition to the House of Commons calling for the law to be changed to give women the right to vote. Over 1,500 women signed the petition. In 1867, John Stuart Mill raised the issue in Parliament. Although lots of MPs supported the idea, it wasn't enough to change the law. But they'd made sure the important issue of votes for women was discussed in parliaments for the first time. The suffragists gathered support from all over Britain through leaflets, public meetings and marches. In 1897, the National Union of Women's Suffrage Societies was formed with Millicent Garrett Fawcett as leader. It became the largest organisation to campaign for votes for women. However, a growing number of women were becoming frustrated by the lack of progress made by the suffragists' peaceful campaign. In 1903, Emmeline Pankhurst formed the Women's Social and Political Union in Manchester with her daughters Christabel, Sylvia and Adela. They vowed to do whatever it took to draw attention to the Votes for Women campaign, even if that meant breaking the law. Their motto was deeds, not words. This was the start of a more militant campaign and those involved became known as the suffragettes. The suffragettes' protests included breaking shop windows, setting buildings on fire and slashing paintings on display in public galleries, including this portrait of Thomas Carlyle at the National Portrait Gallery. After this attack, the police issued the National Portrait Gallery with surveillance images of known suffragettes. These photographs were taken without their knowledge. The Deeds Not Words campaign resulted in many suffragettes being arrested and sent to prison, where they would often continue their protest by refusing to eat. This was known as a hunger strike. In 1914, the women's suffrage movements paused their campaign due to the outbreak of the First World War and encouraged women to support the war effort. In 1918, thousands of women living in Britain were given the right to vote in elections. Ten years later, in 1928, all men and all women over the age of 21 were finally given the right to vote on equal terms. It took over 50 years of campaigning by thousands of people to change the law. Some even lost their lives. Votes for Women was a crucial campaign in the long fight for equal rights between men and women. How far would you go for something you truly believed in? <laughs>